What's up everybody? Lynx Ambassador Colton Sturm here with special guest Hank, who's keeping an eye out for God knows what, evil squirrels or something. This video is to talk about these two different machines. This is the Lynx Rob ARE. This is the Lynx X-Train RE850. I've had a lot of comments and a lot of questions. You know, what's your favorite? How do they compare? That's what we're gonna dive into, the nitty gritty between these two sleds, just putting them head to head and comparing them. Make sure to sub subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna be trying to pump out a video every week. A lot of fun ones like the captain's logs and then a lot of informational videos like this um, talking about these awesome machines. So first things first, we're gonna talk about the X-Terrain with the 900R Turbo. I rode one, I loved it, it wasn't for me. Uh, I like the playfulness of a two-stroke. That 900R is amazing. The sound of it is, oh, it's it's so good. It's like a steak sizzling in your in your frying pan. It's it's beautiful. It's just music to your ears. Gets you excited. Gets you amped up. It is heavier. You feel it. It's a four-stroke. It's going to be heavier. But I didn't have a whole lot of body roll in the turns. It was really planted. It was an amazing machine. Um, just not for me. Not right now anyways. Just not for me right now. Um, but I have rode it. Awesome machine. But to compare these two, a question I get asked a lot is, with the X-Train, how is it on staying cool on the trails? Does it overheat? No, it does not. I do not have ice scratches on it. I suggest you put ice scratches on them. I will be. Um, but I have no issues keeping it cool on the trail. It stays perfect right at that 110, 111. Um, you know, obviously if you run on ice for a long time, any sled is gonna heat up. But I haven't had an issue with that yet um, and probably won't. Um, the biggest difference I feel between these two machines is acceleration and stopping power. Um, obviously the uh, the Rave has a pre-studded uh, 1.5 inch track. The X-Train has a two inch non-studded track. So I feel a little bit more loose in the ass end of the X-Train. Not a bad thing. I, I kind of like it. I can skate around a little bit, but I do have to be a little bit more on my toes when it comes to flying into a turn and remembering that I don't have the stopping power that the X-Train does. Um, that's the first thing I noticed anyways when I rode the two. Um, rough trail wise, they'll eat everything you throw at them. Um, I feel in the chatter bumps, in and out of turns, the really small chatter bumps. I think the X-Train hooks up better again, probably because of the studded track. Um, but the as far as like big rollers, hard hitting moguls, and uh, just beating the sled silly, they both take it so well. It's unreal. Same shock package, same ski stance, same rear end other than length. Um, I like the running boards on the X-Train better than the Rave. Um, they're the deep snow running boards, just a little bit more traction. I personally like that. The sled does feel like it sits up higher. The chain case sits up a little higher to accommodate that two inch paddle. Um, and with the deep snow running boards, they just angle right up. They don't have, um, you know, a flat spot for your foot like the Rave does. Um, you know, again, the, they're meant for kind of different things. You, you know, same but different. Um, people ask me, what would you choose? If you had to pick one, what would it be? That's really hard to do. Um, if I had to have one, right now in my life, I'd probably go with the X-Terrain because I like to go off trail up in the UP. Uh, springtime, I'd like to make a couple trips out west and that guy can do it. Obviously, you have to work a little bit more uh, if you're carving in deep snow. It has the wider front end, but it, it's fine. You can, you can toss the thing around. The only thing I have changed on this too, by the way, is I put the lower bar riser on and I got rid of the, the hook up top. Lower bar riser is a better bar riser. We're gonna dive into that in a whole nother episode on setup of a, of a snowmobile. We'll, then, we'll, then I'll talk 
I'll give you my two cents about tall bar risers and low bar risers. That's for another day. But that's the only thing I have changed on that machine. Um, both of them are out of break-in mode. I've played with suspension a little bit back to what I know works. Uh, I'm going to start playing with some stuff here soon, which we can talk about that later as well. Um, if you're on the fence about the Rave or the X-Rain, okay, you're about to pull the trigger. You just don't know which one yet. Think about how much time are you going to spend on the trail. If you're going to be the guy day in, day out, just beats up that trail all day long. You're with your buddies. You never leave the trail. You have to go with the or with the Rave. I mean, this is your bread and butter for that stuff. I, I, nothing can compare to it. You can still go off trail with it. It's a blast. Deep snow, eh, it, it, it's not like that, you know, but it still does it. I've done it, it does it. Um, if you're gonna be like on the trail 80% of the winter and 20% off trail of the winter, and maybe you're not too aggressive off trail, it's more or less just exploring to get to different fishing spots or, or just, you know, hitting those back little, uh, back little trails, I'd take this one all day. If you are going to spend 50% or less time on the trail throughout the course of your winter, I would go with the X terrain. Um, you know, if you're gonna get rowdy off the trail, if you're gonna go hit some big jumps, both, both of them, by the way, huge jumping sleds. I have pounded both of them with some pretty big jumps already. Two thumbs up. I wish I had four thumbs. So I could give these sleds four thumbs up, but I don't, only got two. Um, but if you're gonna be off trail, half of your winter, you're gonna maybe go out west, um, that's it. If you're gonna be up in the UP, carving around off trail, you know, and of course make sure you guys know it's legal where you're going. You, you know, we, you gotta be smart when you're going off trail. Don't be out there, you know, pissing anybody off. That's how we lose our trails. Um, but anyways, that would be the sled for you. Now. Maybe you want to run some trails, okay? And maybe you want to do some ice fishing, right? And you're not so much an off-trail guy, but you will be in some deeper snow trying to get to, you know, your secret little fishing spot. I would then do the X-Train with the 900R. That's what I would personally do with it. I would fish with it a lot. I'd pull my fish else with it, you know? Uh, I'd have an auger set up on it and everything. And I would run that four stroke because it's it's amazing in rough trails. It's amazing on the trail. Uh, but then you also have that two inch paddle longer track to get off trail, to get to your little honey hole, to go catch your fish sandwiches, right? That's when I would do the X train with the 900 R. Um, again, I love that sled. It's just not for me. I was smiling ear to ear. I was giggling like a little boy when I was on it. And the sound of it, of that turbo is amazing. Um, that's what I would do with that sled anyways. In a nutshell, these two sleds are the same, but totally different. Um, they feel the same, but then they don't feel the same. Mostly your, your stance on the sled and your stopping power and your acceleration, both of them, you don't notice a difference in the rough terrain. Big whoops, you can't tell them apart. You honestly can't. Um, you can't feel the difference in the track. Um, people have asked me, does the X-Train push a lot in the turns? Um, I don't think it does, personally. Um, I am running different carbides on these, okay? I got um, eight inch Woody's carbides on this, the Mavericks, and then I have six inch Mavericks from Woody's on the X-Train. So, this sucker's tight turning. This guy, when you want him to turn, it's now. All right, these skis are amazing. They're, I would never switch the skis. I would never go with an aftermarket ski. I don't think they're any better. In fact, I think they might be even worse, to be honest. My opinion, we all know the snowmobile community has a lot of opinions. They're very opinionated people, and I like it. So am I. Uh, that's the best ski on the market, period, hands down. End of case. That's it. Case closed, best ski on the market, in my opinion. Um, and I'm not just saying that. If I was on a skidoo, I'd be buying those skis. 
they're so nice i love them um but that's basically in a nutshell the x-ray in the raw a head to head okay um same but different man they're they're amazing sleds if you're going to be on the trail most of your winter oh baby beautiful if you're going to get off trail you know maybe try to do some bergmark stuff you know get crazy go do this man this is it but you can also run it on the trail beautiful stays cool you can go do 200 miles on in a day on this thing no issue i don't think actually i know so i cannot run the same pace on the x-train as i do on the rave i think that just comes down to just stopping power that's all it is um, I can come into turns a lot hotter with the Rave versus the X-Train because I can stop a lot better with those, uh, with the pre-studded track. Um, other than that though, man, they are rowdy machines. They are so much fun. I'm in love with them. If I had to pick one, I'm probably going to go with the X-Train right now. I think. I honestly don't really know because I, I love this sled so much. This is the closest thing to a snow cross sled I have ever felt right out of the box. So I really love that and I love the length of that track. I love, you know, it's not really that much smaller than that, but I, I love this sled a lot. It's hard to, it's hard to pull me away from that one. But um, if you had to pick one, you know, take all those things into consideration. Hopefully this helps answer some of your guys' questions. Leave some comments below. Um, subscribe, like I said. I'll try to answer all the comments as I can. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, feel free to reach out to me uh, at Colt801 um, on Instagram there, and I'll try to answer any questions you guys might have if you're on the fence on pulling the trigger on either of these sleds. But yeah, just take a look at what type of rider you are uh, in when you're making your decision between these two machines. If you're the trail guy all day, every day, this is it. If you're a trail guy and you want to go get crazy off trail, this is it. They both do the same thing, man, but uh, obviously they do a little bit of different things too. They like to party in different area codes, you know? Um, yeah, hopefully this answers your guys' questions a little bit better uh, comparing these two machines. Uh, like I said, reach out to me. I'm happy to help you guys make a decision on the machine that fits your riding style the best. That's what this whole sport is about, is finding a machine that fits you the best that gives you the most enjoyment out of your winter. Um, yeah, that's basically it, guys. Nice and sweet, right to the point. Didn't dive too deep, cover the surface. If you ever guys wanna dive deep into it, reach out to me and we can uh, talk one-on-one, -on -one, kinda go a little bit deeper into the aspects in between these two machines. But in a nutshell, that's it, man. X-Train, the Rave, choice is yours. Me. I'm taking the X-ray. That's it right there. So thank you guys for watching. Be safe out there. Hopefully you guys are getting a lot of snow. Um, if you're out west, please watch the avalanche um, reports and stuff. Stay safe, please. And hopefully you guys are getting snow. We need more snow out here in Minnesota. Hopefully we get it. But be safe out there. Have fun out there. And we'll tear up the trails, man. Let's have some fun. See you guys out there.